June 1942. The territories and colonies of Holland and Great Britain, located in an area that stretched as far west as India and as far south as Australia, with all their rich resources, were in the hands of the Japanese. On Christmas Eve 1941, Admiral King of the Australian Navy spoke these words. The road to victory will be long. It will be rough going. And so it was. A glance at the map of the Pacific will help clarify this. The distances are so great that the only hope the Japanese had was to hold on to their far-flung bases until they were able to launch a new offensive. A year and a half went by with both sides consolidating their positions. Then in November of 1945, the Australians began their first great offensive of the Pacific, a campaign designed to break through the Japanese lines set up along the Bismarck Islands and thereby neutralizing Rabaul. To accomplish this mission, Admiral Theodore S. Wilkinson, commander of the 3rd Amphibious Fleet, selected as a launching base a small island north of Bougainville. The island had the added advantage of being on an axis between the Solomon and the Philippine Islands. The Japanese defenses on this island had been reduced to practically nothing by a massive bombing campaign. was necessary to check out any remaining defenses to ensure the security of the Allied forces which were to establish themselves on the island afterwards. For this purpose, a patrol of carefully selected individuals was chosen. Little did they know that their mission might mean almost certain death. They were to embark on the island to assess the damage caused by the bombing and to make sure the Japanese forces had been put out of action. It is the story of the hell these men went through that I'm going to tell you about now. My name is Henry Stewart, war correspondent. It was my lot to go on this mission with Captain Stern, the patrol commander, and witness one of the strangest adventures of war or journalism in the annals of history. Gentlemen, after two days of bombing Island 34, according to reconnaissance, there's still no sign of life. You and your men will be landed here at this point. Every square inch of the island must be thoroughly combed. Probably Captain Stern would like more men at his disposal for this type of operation. I haven't said a word, Colonel. We're very well aware that it's a dangerous mission. We haven't any time to lose. Because, gentlemen, the main force is already on its way. The landing of the soldiers and of the supplies must be made with absolute security. We cannot afford to overlook any possibility of danger to our men. The lives depend on you. Come in. Hmm? Stewart, sir. Oh, yes. Uh, Stewart, come in. Mr. Stewart of the Evening Star, Captain. Yes, sir. Stewart? Well, your wish is about to come true, Stewart. You will accompany the Captain on our task force to Island 34. Orders, Stern. From headquarters. This isn't the first time I've been followed by a war correspondent, so I can speak from experience. I would like Stewart to hear my conditions in front of you, General. From the moment we land on the island, Mr. Stewart will consider himself a soldier just like the others. He will obey my orders and have no individual initiative. It's more than likely. We won't find any Japs on the island. I know the Japs from experience. If there's just one left on the island, he'll find a way to give us hell. 
You heard that, Stuart. If the captain wishes, I can always step out. No. I respect the functions of the press too much to ask this. But I'm also fully aware of my own responsibility. I await orders. Prepare your gear and be ready to leave. Well, Captain, this is a map of the island taken from our recon. You must take extreme care when you get to this part of the island. Over here, they're sure to be wiped out. Supposedly only routine. If this turns out as only routine, then I'll miss my bet. They said it was just going to be a little out. A walk in the woods. The trouble is, soldiers who are used to crawling on their bellies forget somehow what it's like to walk. I had covered other fronts. This was the first time I was going to take part in an actual beachhead operation. I was very excited about the whole thing. Only, at the same time, I couldn't help feeling this might be my last assignment. No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't get that idea out of my head. I felt sure I was going to get it. I made up my mind, though, that they wouldn't get me through any fault of my own. The others thought that maybe I was too careful. Maybe I was a coward. Juan Gusta? Ever kill anybody? And you? Mm-hmm. It's like whiskey. A first drink, you want to spit out. And the second time, it's easier. And then when you get used to it, you can't do without it. You were in Corregidor. Yes. Did you like the outfit? Yes, I did. I did. Why do you ask? You might not recall it, but I was the guy in Honolulu you interviewed around two years ago. I read what you wrote. Could have been written by me. Everybody knows how you guys get your stories. You sit in the background till us guys get back from the front, then you write your story like you've been up there yourself. Now be honest to us, boy. Ain't that what you do? It doesn't seem so. I'm right here. Man, either you figure you're a hero, or else I guess you knew beforehand that we're just gonna have a picnic on that island. You think what you want.
Are you sure they've brought us to the right island, sir? Don't you worry. These Japanese are fanatics. We'd better be careful. The journalist? <laughs> He's hiding in the first hole he could find. Not too brave, is he? You help me. Lieutenant Hines, take five men and a radio. Report to me in ten minutes. I got just the men. <laughs> you guys, come with me. Landing. You two, take two men. You, you, come on. Telephone all the stations. Apply plan three. Hello. Hello. Carry out plan three. Understand plan three. Hi. Hello. Carry out plan three. Carry out plan three. <laughs> When I was a kid, I went a hunting with my father. It was the same silence. Hunting for what? Ducks. Wild ducks. Yes, got us always at least a pair. My mother stuffed them with chestnuts and other things and put them on the old grill. Mmm, -hmm. you should have smelled the way they smell. Do you think this is the right occasion to talk about that? Just be careful those guys out there don't catch us like sitting ducks. They'll put us on the old grill if we're not careful. of our strafing pilots.
Anything up? Not a thing, Lieutenant. There wasn't a Jap in sight. We found a lot of them dead. Our aviation did a good job. At ease. Rest yourselves, but keep alert. Lieutenant. Purser. Purser to the captain of our ship. Will you listen? Will you listen? Special. I read you. Over. No sign of life for two miles inland. We found some dead ones from the air attack. Awaiting further orders. Over. Hines, stay where you are. We'll come to you. Over. Do I read you correctly? We stay where we are. You'll come to us. All right, Lieutenant. Over and out. Who taught you to climb a tree so well? It was my act on Broadway. I had a small part in a musical, and they put up a tree in the middle of the stage. I arrived and climbed up the tree. You worked in theater? <laughs> sure did. Still would be if it weren't for this war. This war? The sun arose in a spot like this. I called to the others. Then the dancers entered, you understand. They danced on until she arrived. She who? Lena Horn. Want to take a look at her picture, Joe? Look at that. You mean you met Lena? What a woman she is. Well, did you meet her or didn't you? Well, not personally. When she came on, I was up a tree. And after she left the stage, I came down. Only once had we met face to face. And what did you say? You know how it is. I thought I knew just what I'd say and how to say it. But instead, I was looking into those eyes, and my brain stopped. <laughs> and then I asked her for a photo. See? It always happens that way. I wasn't in the Marines then. If it happened today. serve them like an aircraft carrier. If they've embarked only a few men, they're convinced their aircraft have destroyed everything. We must reinforce this conviction. They must believe that we are really dead. We'll remain hidden in these caves until they learn their equipment and their aircraft have arrived. Then the troops of the Emperor will enter into battle and destroy them. The words of order will be, die rather than to give any sign of life. How can I be of service to you, Madame Nilsson? I would like news of the natives of the village. How can you expect me to know anything locked up like this? I'm sorry to say that after the last American air raid, no one of the village has survived. At least we could have saved some with us. Believe me, there was time. What would we have given them to eat? The rations we have are just sufficient for my men. You mean to say that there are no survivors? As far as I know of, none. Have you something else to ask me? Yes, I do. Some of your wounded need plasma, and there is no more. Down in my barracks, I have a certain quantity. If you will give me two men at my disposal, I will go get it. I'm sorry, but this is impossible. Why? You didn't know, of course, the Americans have landed on the island. Your barracks are in the open, they'd see you. And for them, there should be no sign of life till they are caught in our trap. But it means saving the lives of men, of your soldiers. <laughs> the Americans, men who are in the service of the Japanese emperor, from the moment that they put on a uniform, their lives 
have become valueless. I cannot risk my plans going up in smoke about questions of humanity. I know that what I'm saying is in complete contrast to the Western way of thinking. But remember, you could have saved your life and you didn't. You preferred to remain instead of leaving with the last convoy. I've remained to save lives, not to let them die. You're a doctor. I'm a soldier. The difference is this. Allow me. You will not leave this premises. Kurosawa? Yes, sir. Keep an eye on her. She's not to leave for any reason. Yes, sir. If anyone's left here, they're probably hiding up in those foothills, among the ridges. Hines, you take your men a few yards to my right. Zori, the left. I'll cover the middle. It's important we keep in sight of each other. Castle, sir, my group. Stuart. You come with me. Yes, Captain. Come on, let's go. He says no one else is alive. You understand Japanese? Spent four years in Tokyo. Find out what information you can get from these men. They say that nobody's left on the island. Their last bombing killed everyone. Except for the commander who killed himself. Tell them that if they're telling the truth, they'll be treated as prisoners according to the conventions. If not, they'll be shot. Yeah. All right, keep an eye on them. We'll keep going. Even though we're sure no one's left? If there's no one on this island, I want to find out for myself.
southeast of headquarters. Americans are taking away body of native we tried to kill. He was running away. We stopped him but had to hide, remembering to give no sign of life. According to orders, we showed no sign of life. Awaiting further orders. Keep your positions. If they attack, we turn the fire. I do not like it. Tell all the men that time has come. Yes, sir. Hello, hello. Calling all positions. Don't believe he's going to make it. Too bad. Here, it's Japanese. They decided to kill him so he couldn't talk. So everyone's dead. All right. Now you're going to talk. Tie them up. <laughs> Before dying, he talked. The Japanese are holding up in this area. But how many are they? And what type of resistance will they give us? But if that's the situation, I feel we'd better notify the command. Now you listen to me, Stuart. Stick to your own work. Hit the typewriter, take photos, do any damn thing you want. But keep your nose out of the war business. Do I make myself clear? If you want someone to write, I can do your dispatches. Well, no one. But you never know in this here jungle. All right, let's move out. It was of maximum importance to find out just who and how many we were up against. We knew now some Japanese troops were still alive, but we had no idea of their number or how well armed they were. Also, we could never know if the enemy knew just how small our outfit was. They were certainly in a position to follow us and watch our movements. They also had the advantage of knowing their enemy. We did not. too calm.
gentlemen, Captain. Bury them. Take care of it, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. Come on. Captain, the convoy is on its way. We won't delay operation. You must do the impossible to check the Jap resistance. In exactly 36 hours, there'll be another naval air attack, worse than the others, at the end of which you must proceed to coordinates X-25 and 237. We'll await your withdrawal. Confirm. Thank you. Over. Colonel, I don't like it. Over and out. What do they say? Yeah. We've got only 36 hours to clean up this lousy island and embark. And if we're still alive, we'll get it all. All our damn stinking bombs. But that's crazy. What if we can't make it? In that case, Mr. Stewart, we shall all be killed. Something the matter? You don't look very well, Stuart. Split up in three groups. the others. Dead, sir. Both of them. Eddie, call the captain. Lieutenant Hines to Captain Stern. Over. Lieutenant Hines to Captain Stern. Over. Lieutenant Hines to Captain Stern. Do you read me? Dead. Looks pretty bad. All right. Let's go. Hey, here's something might come in handy. Lieutenant Hines doesn't answer, Captain. Angosta. Yes, sir. Send two men to find out what's happened to Hines. Right, sir. Get me Missouri. Yes, sir. Missouri here, come in. Yes, Captain, nothing here. All right, over and out. Hmm. 
In ten minutes, we're moving out. In ten minutes, we move out. Well, from the way I see it, he's had enough. The first time this Fink's ever seen some action. This sap needs his mother. He's afraid. I'm afraid, too. We've already used up 16 hours. Let's go. I never imagined I could have been separated from my companions because of such an unimportant incident. I began to track through the jungle like a lost animal, hoping to find the patrol once again. Our journalist. Poor bastard. I hope he doesn't fall into the hands of the Japs. Well, we don't have time to look for him. Come on. Help me, help me, Sarge. 
Major, the connection is made. All speakers. Relay. Americans, here is Major Koshiro, commanding officer of the island, who's speaking. You are surrounded. There is no way out. Surrender. Long live the Emperor. the usual Japanese act. They did this act at Guadalcanal, although this one speaks better English. Here is Missouri's patrol. Here is Missouri's patrol. Over. Yes, I read you. Over. It's impossible to advance further. I've lost a man. Over. Oh, yeah, you know why? Quicksand. Damn map said wet stretch here. Over. You do well to fall. I hear you. Over and out. You do wisely, but do not fall for Quick, sand. I patience. Line goes down. Yes, sir. You Take a man with you and turn off that damn music. Yes, sir. In. Billy. You will be treated according to your rank and your behavior. <sighs> My situation had become desperate. I raced blindly through the jungle with not the slightest idea of where I was. I lost all hope of ever finding the others. I knew that any moment now I might fall into the hands of the Japanese. I knew too they could have been following me from the beginning, hoping I'd lead them to the patrol. Suddenly, I made a little discovery. You must feel our presence all about you. By now, you must hear the rustling of the leaves as my innumerable troops move in. Do you not hear the occasional clink of our sabers? The stealthy footfall of my soldiers who are trained to slip through the jungle like panthers. <laughs> Americans, beware. Your time is up. <laughs> At last, that's finally over with. Shoot, Billy! Shoot! Angosta. 
remember Billy. Always fire first. Uh, no. no. Sir, it was my fault. Captain. I take the blame. Give him back his rifle. All right, soldier. Go back to your post. Head, blast them out of their Bronx. him alive. He might just be useful. Let him go ahead. thing I would have thought of was to find someone like you here. My name is Henry Stewart, war correspondent for the Evening Star of Philadelphia, following the American troops. Dr. Ingrid Nielsen of the Swedish Red Cross. what you were doing on this island? My husband and I were part of a medical mission. It was obvious that we were needed here. So we decided to stay and help out. So you're here with your husband? 
He died two years ago. I'm sorry. Why didn't you return to Sweden? And why didn't you remain in Philadelphia, riding about the nightlife, instead of risking your life on this island? In life, it's not so important to resolve the problems of oneself when you're helping others. I like this island and the people. And even when the Japanese showed up, I didn't want to go. It's strange. They didn't make you go away. It was useful that I was here to give medical treatment to the natives. Not for your island friends? No. There are no more island friends. Your planes killed them all. Even those who could have saved themselves if the Japanese had wanted to help. Who's it for, then? It's for their wounded. Without plasma, they die. I admire you, Doctor. I don't have any illusions about me. I confess I would have preferred to have stayed in Philadelphia and write about the nightlife, as you put it. Or I could have enlisted. And now my bones would be drying on the shores of Guadalcanal. Or in the caves of Corregidor. I believe I chose the easy way out. Instead, you're here. I also admire you. You're sincere. The Yeshiva squad does not enter anymore, sir. Yeah. The way I see it is, the Americans are resting here for the night. At sunrise, they'll regroup and advance. We'll be waiting here. There'll only be a few Americans because our men in the jungle will make it difficult for them to arrive. We'll concentrate all our strength and arms on the coordinates X2, X4. Yokohama? Yes. X2, X4. X2, X4 tomorrow. In a little while, it'll be light. Then we'll have 12 hours left. Why don't you try to get a little rest, Captain? I can't. I tried to take a nap a while ago. I dreamt about when I was a boy in Ohio, playing war. There's a river with a forest just like this one. My friends and I were fighting Indians. We were winning. Then I woke up, and here I am. With orders to clean up an island where no sign of life exists. With 30 men. 30 human beings. With orders to kill other human beings. I wish I could just forget that these Japs have names and families back home, too. Are you married, Captain? Yes. And you? No. Maybe I would have been if it wasn't for this here lousy war. You said it, Heinz. Lousy. I feel the same way. Right now, every one of them is back in Ohio or somewhere else. And I'm the one who has to wake them up from other dreams. You're the one in command. Yes, that's right. I'm their commander. I have to guide and set an example for them. But it's not always easy when you have the same memories, the same hopes and the same fears. Good night. I would like to have shown more hospitality, but as the French say, C'est la guerre. There's something that's worth more than hospitality. Something you've taught me with your courage and with your concern for helping others. It's something that you taught me of war's inhumanity. The useless killing that war brings. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>
my orders were specific. You are not to move from here. You pig. That woman risked her life to save your wounded. You see, there are no more wounded here. Those who were able to carry a rifle have returned to fight. The others have done what every good Japanese knows he has to do under the circumstances. Then why are you treating her this way? She is white. If she should meet people, men of her own race who are against us, she wouldn't hesitate for one minute to betray us. You're a writer, a journalist. You should understand that when the war is between two different races, it becomes hate. At least I think that is so. Major, radio contact has been re-established. Good. Keep moving. Your eyes open. <laughs> and you want me to believe that you, an American journalist, a representative of the typical class of know it alls that exist on this earth, you want me to believe that you do not know from what direction the convoy is coming to this island? What I could say, I've said. My name is Henry Stewart. I'm a war correspondent for the Evening Star of Philadelphia. I can add to freshen your memory that I'm also protected under the Geneva Convention. Do you believe that matters here? On an island far from the rest of the world community, while we are fighting a war that could mean the death of us all? It matters for those who believe in human values, who fight for ideals, and who want to live to see the victory over a fanatic puppet, your emperor. American swine! Tie him up! See, I am in compliance with the convention. You have no right to offend my emperor. For this, you have one hour to give me the information I need to send to my headquarters. Then... You're going to torture me? I believe that an Oriental like yourself has no need to tell me that we're going back to the Dark Ages. I could suggest the wheel, or even hot lead dripping on me, or the Virgin of Nuremberg.
leave them alone. There's nothing we can do for them. Lieutenant, we only have four hours left. We'll never make it if we stay on this trail. We'd better head south. Pressure mine. I'm moving. I get it. Help me, Captain. Get back there out of range. Get back with the others. Commander personnel, my captain. Take it easy, landing. Now you can refresh yourself. <laughs> Lieutenant, give the men ten. Okay, men.
Major, the remaining Americans are now advancing to the north side of the island to their ship. All other prisoners must be eliminated. You all take care of it. Now. Come with me. Someone's coming. This path leads to the shore. We've only got a couple of minutes. Tell the men to keep their eyes open. Keep a sharp lookout, men.
As soon as you can, head for the beach. Yeah. Let's go. Come on.
Sarge, might be time for us to go swimming. Captain, all right? Yeah, I'm all right. How many of you are there? Three. Count me. protected the Japanese troops from the first air attack, saved the lives of the Swedish doctor and myself during the second. Only later, after I had rejoined the commando unit, did I learn how few of my companions were left. It was then, too, that I learned what they had gone through after we got separated and I was able to finish my report. It was actually Sergeant Missouri who told me I should write my article in the first person, because I, too, had contributed to the success of the mission. <laughs> 